hello, RWU families. It's wonderful to be with you all on this virtual platform tonight. Um, I too want to echo President Mialis's remarks about how we how much we miss your students. We miss you. We miss being on campus and the wonderful energy um, that we have when we are all together on campus. But I can tell you, I'm going into my 20th year at Roger Williams, and I've never been more proud of the effort of campus coming together, um, given the situation that we're currently in. Um, I can tell you from our faculty doing a wonderful job with getting things up to, uh, be ready for remote learning to our staff finding unique ways to meet with students um, whether it's over the phone or in a virtual meeting it's been really wonderful to see everyone come together um, from your poll we kind of suspected that the um, most wonderful part was knowing that your students were safe with you um, and certainly all the decisions that we've been making on campus um, have really been um, with that in mind we want to make sure that folks are safe and that we want to make sure that we're um, helping the students go along uh, with their college experience um, in the best way that we can right now during this time. And I think for many of our students, um, getting settled into their classes and reconnecting with faculty and their peers has been really what we're hearing from them is keeping them going through this difficult time. So I'm glad to be here to share with you some of my thoughts um, from the Center for Student Academic Success and what we've put into place um, to support your students and you during this time, and also to highlight some of the important things that we wanna make sure that you're aware of so that you can help us in supporting your students to be as successful as they can uh, this semester. So Brian's going to help me with advancing my slides uh, today. So thank you for that, Brian. Um, how you can help um, the families that I've been in touch with, that's always the first question is, um, I acknowledge that this is a change um, for my student and what can I do to help? Um, so I wanna start there and talk about opening up that conversation um, around how this is impacting our students' learning. Um, we know that some of them may have had experience in the past with doing online or remote learning, but many have not. So just acknowledging that that change is different for them and that we know that it's gonna take some time to get used to. Um, we're hearing wonderful comments from students about how they've been that they're making the adjustment but we're also hearing from some of our um, students that they are experiencing challenges and so I'll highlight a few of the things that we've been hearing from and um, see if those are the things that you're hearing from um, the students as well so I think they appreciate having um, that conversation uh, with their families about how well things are going and identifying some of those challenges so that we can help them um, get the support they need no matter whether we're dealing with a pandemic or regular time, um, as I would call it, we always wanna encourage the students to have a growth mindset. And some of you may be familiar with that term, some of you may not, but what it really means is thinking about what we might not be good at yet. So the example I often use with students is that I'll hear from them that they're not good at math. Allison, I can't do math, I can't do this particular class. And so we really want them to reframe that. We don't expect them to be able to do everything um, super, super well, right? We all have um, strengths and then things that maybe we need to work on a bit more. And so we wanna encourage them to think about not being good at it yet. Um, and particularly in this time, when there are added challenges to their learning. Um, giving themselves some grace um, during this time and letting them know that it's okay to need to work through some of these things. So you'll see that quote that I put up there. Um, we really wanna acknowledge that we have to embrace the challenges, know that there's gonna be mistakes, take some joy in putting in the effort and just keep on learning. And so when we talk about some of the policies that we've instituted and some of the support, I'll help you see that's really what's fueling us right now is that we know this is an extraordinary time that's not learning as normal, but we want to see them learn from this time and hopefully come out with maybe some skill sets that they didn't anticipate working on this semester, but that they might have at the end of this time. Where you can help, and a lot of students are struggling with this right now, is with creating some structure and creating a place for them to focus. 
And depending on what the environment is, where your family is right now, um, sometimes that's hard, right? Students are used to being, sharing a room with just a roommate or a couple of roommates and being able to go to places on campus to find quiet space. And that might not always be possible at home. But helping them figure out a quieter place, a place where they can feel like they have a table or a desk to work at, and helping them build a schedule for when they're going to do their schoolwork. I've been talking to many of the students and they say, I know that I had a schedule when I left campus, when my classes were, when my meetings were for clubs and organizations, if and I was an athlete, when I worked out, when my practices were, and now everything's different. So it's almost like we have to take a step back with them and think about building that schedule during the pandemic, right? So maybe their classes um, are not meeting during a set time, um, as they were before, but maybe they check in with one another in a different way. Maybe there are videos or other things that faculty are encouraging them to watch. They really need to build that schedule. Um, I've heard from some students that building that schedule has now created a place for them to strike up a little bit more of the balance of the schoolwork. I think the first um, week or so with this being all online, it was a little bit overwhelming because they haven't quite figured out that schedule. I'm starting to hear from students now that they're settling in. If they've built that schedule, that's helping, that they are starting to recognize the importance of having some balance, finding time to go take that walk, making sure they're taking care of themselves, um, and having a little bit more patience with themselves. Um, for some of our students who are super driven and high achievers, they don't tend to give themselves a lot of patience. And so encouraging those students um, to know that this is a different time and we're all moving about it in slightly different ways and that's okay. Um, we want them to know that there's ways for them to access support on campus academically and I'll go into great detail in how you can refer them to those supports. Um, but it's important for them to know that they don't have to do it alone. They've got you all at home and they've got us on campus while we might not physically be on campus we are still there for them we acknowledge that not every um, house is having um, an easy time with technology right so many people are working remotely so there's challenges on internet and space i know there's three of us who are on our computers pretty much all day in my house and sometimes that's hard um, so if students are experiencing difficulty um, with technology or accessing um, some of the things that they need for their work. I've listed on the screen for you, our media tech department is still available. So if they need help with bridges and logins, that type of thing, tech support is still available for them. And often those folks can talk um, virtually with students and walk them through any of the difficulties they might be experiencing. We also know that there are students and families who are struggling with actual access to technology. So please, if your family is in that situation um, and your student is working off a phone, that might be really hard, or a laptop that's older and it's giving them trouble, or you don't have internet, I encourage you to have your student reach out to the Center for Student Academic Success at the email uh, provided there, csas at rw.edu. And we're doing our very best to identify either campus resources or resources in your area so that you can access that technology and, and we get them into their classes. So I think this next poll question will give me a sense on how you think your students are adjusting to remote learning. So Brian's gonna pull that up for us. So on a scale of one to five, one being least to five most, how would you rate your students' adjustment to remote learning? So five being adjusting very well, four fairly well, three somewhat well, down to slightly well and not well with two and one. how those polls are coming in they're coming in just fine it, it it's about a minute to let everybody read and, and select the choices and 
we're just about there. So the results are coming now. Well, that's certainly encouraging. It looks like we're at about 75% adjusting very well or fairly well. And then that's wonderful to see. So that says a lot about our students and their resiliency, right? That's what we wanna be promoting during this time. Um, I'm glad to hear that so many of them are doing well and, and are finding their way. Um, and for those of you who might have a student in your house who was in that um, bottom category that are still struggling a bit, um, here is some really important information for you to provide them with some resources so that we can help them figure out a way to get into those categories of adjusting really well. So our Center for Student Academic Success is our support network on campus for students academically. It's made up of three primary areas, our Advising and Peer Mentorship Office, Student Accessibility Services, and the Tutoring Center. Um, all of these areas uh, report to me, and we've been working really hard to figure out ways to connect with students uh, remotely. So I've provided um, information and the email accounts for those offices so that you can see that there's a way for students to still connect with those offices. So we have students who are setting up phone appointments if that's what they feel comfortable with. We're doing lots of virtual appointments. Um, we're finding that students are really enjoying being able to sit um, computer to computer with someone and have a conversation. It, it makes them feel like, you know, it's a little bit part of our regular um, environment. So we've really been enjoying seeing them. All three of these offices are providing services um, remotely right now. And so I'll talk a little bit about advising and peer mentorship because we are in our registration period right now. And so if students need help with registering for their classes, um, they need assistance with academic coaching, they need referrals to getting some extra support or just want to talk to somebody generally about where they stand with their classes and maybe making some choices with things and, and figuring out a plan for the end of the semester. Professional advisors in the advising office are available. We also have um, virtual drop-in hours for our peer mentors. So leave it to the students to figure out a way um, to do drop-in hours. So um, if you go to our website, and you look on support spring 2020, um, students can access peer mentors uh, Monday through Friday at various times, and they can actually drop into a virtual meeting so they can get to see one another and talk about any issues that they'd like to speak to a peer about. We find that sometimes students have questions that they feel much more comfortable asking a peer um, and asking for some direction. So we definitely encourage them to keep in contact with their peer mentors. Our students with um, disabilities um, are provided services through Student Accessibility Services, and that department has been working with their students to ensure that we still have access, uh, equal access to the educational process for those students. So uh, Laura Schwinier and her staff have been working uh, really hard to um, maintain their regular connections with students. So students who have regular appointments with that office are stay, still able to do that. Uh, we are still providing academic accommodations in the classroom um, with our faculty colleagues and Laura is now preparing um, the process for how students will get extra time um, on their final exams uh, now that we're on this virtual platform. So we're working really hard to make sure that everything our students with disabilities would normally get um, on campus they're getting virtually. Um, these students are um, a very resilient group as a whole to begin with. Um, but it's important that they maintain those connections with this office um, and don't decide to just try to go on their own um, for some of the things that we know they need the support in. So if your student has been accessing that office um, and needs some extra support, please contact Laura directly and she will make sure uh, to connect with your student. The last area, but certainly not the least, is the tutoring center. And when this first came through that we were going to go remote, um, I challenged the tutoring center to figure out how we were gonna do this. And Karen Bellotti and her staff figured out a way to continue to provide tutoring in math, science, and writing as we normally do. I can tell you it's been wildly popular. Um, the students who are accessing tutoring help um, are routinely telling us how much it's meant 
to connect with peers and with tutors that they've had a relationship with, um, that they feel that they have some place to go to for another set of eyes on their papers or to work through those problem sets in math. And the tutors are telling us how important it's been to them um, to be able to provide this really important service for their peers. So um, I'm really proud of the efforts in those offices. You can feel free to reach out to any of the directors or myself directly if you have any um, concerns that you'd like to talk to privately, but we are available for all of them. Brian can go on to our next um, poll. We wanted to get a sense for um, the areas that you know your student might be accessing for uh, support right now. So if we look at the next poll question, select all that apply, please. Are you aware of your student accessing any of the following RWU academic support services? So do you know if they've taken advantage of the virtual drop-ins with their peer mentors, they've talked with an advisor, they are continuing to work with student accessibility services or tutoring? Um, have they been contacting their faculty member and maybe um, participating in office hours virtually? Or have they made contact with the Career and Professional Development Office? So I'd love to hear how you think they're accessing supports. And if you know they haven't been accessing those services, maybe you can give them a little nudge for us. Okay, results are coming in. So as they're just starting to roll in, the two biggest ones, uh, contact with advisors and meeting with faculty, um, and that's, that's wonderful to hear. Um, tutoring is, is showing really low here. I hope that maybe uh, you're just not aware of the tutoring the help they're getting because we're doing lots of appointments. Um, but certainly it's nice to see uh, that your students have been letting you know about the support that they're reaching out for. And again, if you can help us with encouraging them to uh, take advantage of these resources, that would be greatly appreciated. So Allison, there's one error with this poll. This was set up as a single choice, not multiple choice. So ah, that, okay. that affected that, the that uh, <laughs> replies here a little bit. So I apologize for that one. No, no worries, but that might explain it. Thank you for everyone who pointed that out in the question and answer. Um, my apologies on that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So things to think about. Um, I mentioned earlier that students are now registering for summer uh, and fall classes. Uh, fall classes were in our last two days of registration. So if you could check in with your student and uh, be sure they've gotten registered if they need any help with it. Again, their faculty academic advisor or one of the advisors in the advising office can help with that. Uh, we've had uh, most of our classes um, get through the process um, just fine. Um, and seeing really good numbers for fall 2020 registration, which is terrific to see. And our summer classes were just uh, emailed out to our students, uh, I believe it was yesterday. Um, so if they're interested in looking at what online offerings we have for the summer, there's uh, general education requirement classes and upper level electives. There's a little bit of everything for everyone. So uh, we do encourage you to have conversations with them about summer plans. I know students, um, now that they're feeling more comfortable with online, um, I'm hoping that we'll see online registrations for the summer um, continue so that students can continue moving forward with their academic plans. It's also a great time to talk to them about um, potential work and internship plans, uh, both for late summer and the fall. Um, and certainly campus offices like the Center for Career and Professional Development can certainly have um, conversations with them on how to access the internships. Uh, but it's never too early to do that planning. 
The other really important piece of information that we wanted to make sure that families know about is that the university with President Mialis' uh, leadership made the decision to go to a pass, no pass policy option for all of our students. And it's important that you know that the philosophy behind this decision was recognizing what extraordinary circumstances we're in and wanting to really um, give students an option um, for releasing some of that pressure if they were feeling it because of the remote learning. So all students have until June 1st to decide to switch over to pass, no pass. They can make that decision for just one class um, or they can make it for all classes. The important thing to know is that the June 1st deadline is after grades are posted. So students do have the option to see what their letter grades come in as and then make a decision for pass, no pass options. We are seeing some students um, already letting us know that they wanna switch to this for one or more classes. We're happy to have conversations with students about the decisions. Um, there's some great resources on the COVID website um, as well as the CSAS website on things for students to think about in making that decision. And then also encourage them to have conversations with their faculty advisors. Um, but it's an important way for students to be able to continue their learning and again, release a little bit of that pressure, um, knowing that there's lots of other things competing for their attention right now and recognizing that some students and families are under considerable hardship right now. So we wanna make sure that students focus on the important thing, which is their learning, and maybe not necessarily on they have to get a specific grade in a class. So if students have particular um, concerns about that and wanna talk, please have them speak with their faculty advisor or someone in Center for Student Academic Success. But it's an important thing for you to have as a conversation with them as well. Brian, could you go to the next slide? Great. Other things to think about um, is we're beginning to get questions about study abroad planning. And so certainly uh, right now we are going forward with our plans for the fall, taking into consideration um, uh, you know, what different areas of the globe look like right now. Um, I spoke with study abroad today and they told me as of right now today, none of our fall sponsored programs have canceled. Uh, so if your student has plans to go abroad and wants to speak to somebody in that office, Kevin Hayden is available to talk with them through that. Uh, but we are continuing to monitor that situation as things change. Other great resources on campus, um, I've mentioned a few of them before, career and professional development. Uh, again, to be talking about future planning and uh, what students might have for ideas for internships, for example. Their faculty academic advisors, because we have been in registration, I think that has really promoted students to have conversations with their academic advisors, but they are certainly available through the remainder of the semester. Um, our students who uh, normally um, access support for intercultural center or a Q track um, for all of our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, those staffs remain available and are also doing virtual office hours. So I encourage students to maintain uh, those important contacts. Our financial aid office is continuing with business as usual and reaching out to students and making sure that their questions about impacts of financial aid are getting uh, answered and they can also set up virtual appointments there. And we're going to just mention my colleagues in student life. Um, Chris is going to cover the Counseling Center in just a few moments, but I think it's important to remind students of the importance of um, keeping the connections to the folks they have on campus, whether it's their peers in clubs and organizations, the staff in residence life and health services, our student programs and leadership staff um, have done some tremendous work in providing students with all kinds of um, interesting information on um, keeping themselves active and busy and connected with campus. I know lots of our clubs and organizations have been meeting uh, virtually and are doing creative things like dance challenges and TikTok videos uh, to keep their groups moving. And our Hawks Herald newspaper is continuing to uh, publish um, as we get through this pandemic. So um, connections to Roger Williams um, still exist and hopefully you can encourage your student to maintain um, however they feel comfortable, those connections with campus. But I know we definitely wanna hear from them.